I have just received from Bulgaria an audio interface that has it all. The Galaxy 32 from Antelope Audio. Antelope Audio's Galaxy 32 is a single rack interface. Its front control panel looks simple. However, in this video, we are going to see that this interface has it all. This interface has 32 analog inputs and outputs, which you must connect via a DB25 cable, either going out to TRS or XLR. It is also a state of the art with Dante technology. It has 64 Dante inputs and outputs. It has two HDX ports. MADI ports, 64 inputs and outputs, one SPDIF input and output port, two monitor outputs that are TRS, 8-channel ADAT input and output. It has a Thunderbolt 3 port and I can tell you that since it came into the studio it has helped us improve our whole setup. Let's talk a little bit about the control panel from left to right. When it's controlled by the internal clock it lights this LED. When it's controlled by an Antelope Audio 10MX atomic clock it shows this icon. On the left panel of the physical interface there are some meters. You can choose which meters are going to appear there. For example in the meter cell section here is add that in from 1 to 8 but I can choose line in from 1 to 32 for example and in the control panel of the interface it will show me those inputs the same thing happens in the right control panel you enter meters R and here you choose the source you want for example I will choose what comes out from 1 to 32 and in the physical interface it changes to that LED the lightning bolt that you see on the control panel of the interface means that it is connected to a computer via Thunderbolt and the front knob is going to be used to adjust the output level. Let's talk a bit about the control panel. As you can see at the top we can check if the clock is internal or if we want to adjust it by an external source. In my case it is internal. Remember that something very special of this brand are the clocks. So with different devices that I have in the studio that have output, input, speed if, output, input, ADAT, I have preferred that the clock is always internal. Also in this part is the sample rate. And I can use this button to make the interface light up so that you know that it is connected to the computer. Let's go from left to right. In this section, speed if, you can adjust the input gain of these channels. You can also join them to be stereo. We also have the ADAT part, if we want to adjust the gain of any channel, which we usually do physically, but Antelope gives us this option as well, if we want to adjust any parameter. You can double click and write the decibels that you want to add or remove, if you want to be more exact. In session, you can save here some configurations of the interface or you can also load configurations of the interface. In case you make a setup for some special recording, you can save or load it here. I also have a presets area that I can make according to the need that I have. And in info is the information of the interface, serial, firmware, and also if you want to see the manual, click on it and it appears. In the top left part, you will see the speakers that you have connected to the interface. You will find them in the surround section that we are going to see later. In my case, I have a 7.1.4. That's why all these speakers appear. And there is something very interesting. I have a pre-fader measurement or a post fader measurement when i have it on pre fader you know it's not going to affect the volume that i have on the interface all these meters will move and when i have it in post fader it will depend on the volume at which i am listening or we continue with the surround level which you can adjust here and the monitor level which you can also adjust independently it has a base management control that you can enable or disable and you can also enable or disable options such as surround EQ or delay. There is one thing I really like about this interface which is the routing that I can do internally. 
It looks like a digital patch bay of the whole interface. Let's take a look at it. Here I can activate or deactivate the inputs of the interface. For example, I have inputs 1 to 32 enabled and also output 1 to 32. If I'm not using output 33 to 64, I just click on it. If I'm going to use Dante, I activate it. In my case, I'm not using Dante, HDX or MADI, but for example, I am using ADAT. I can do several mixes and assign them to different outputs of my interface. The same thing happens in the bottom section, which is the outputs. Here I enable or disable what I want to use. In my case, line out, monitor, input 1 to 32 of the DAW, 33 to 64, I don't use and I go through what I want to enable and what I don't want to enable. So, for example, if I want to assign what goes into my preamplifier, which I have connected via ADAT to input 1 and 8 of the DAW, I simply drag and that's it. Everything that goes into 1 to 8 channels of my preamp will go into the 1 to 8 input of my DAW. In my case, that's not what I'm looking for. So again, I drag channels 1 through 8 of my line input to 1 and 8 of the door input and so I can go and set up everything up the way I want it. If you guys are doing a Dolby Atmos setup you select door output 1 through 16 and drag it to the surround input as such of your interface and the surround output if you notice I have it assigned to the 1 to 16 output of the interface and that would be the routing. This setup that I just did is great if you're doing Dolby Atmos with this interface because then you can adjust the volume output of all the speakers with the knob. In this mixer section you can set up the different mixes for your musicians. Remember that you have up to four mixes for them. Coming to AFX you can add different effects compressors, equalizers. I'm going to add this FET at 76 and this is going to channel 1. Let's say I want to add another effect, for example an equalizer. Here it is. And I'll tell you, the plugins that Antelope Audio has are great. The latency is zero and you can monitor with them, even record. Now if I want to assign an effect or an EQ to channel 7 or 8, well, I can do it. And if you notice, in the one I have the two processes that I've put and in the seven to eight that I have stereo, I have the process that I inserted. In the microphone emulation section, we can connect an antelope microphone that emulates other microphones and you can choose here the microphone you would like to emulate. One of the sections I use a lot is the surround section. You can choose the monitoring you have here. If it is stereo, 2.1, with a subwoofer, 3.0, 3.1, and so on. In my case, I have a 7.1.4, and you can choose the type of configuration if you want. Sempty or film. Recall that Sempty is the standard where L is channel 1, R is channel 2, 3 center, 4 the subwoofer, 5 the LSS, 6 the RSS, 7 LRS, 8 RRS and for the top speakers 9 LTF, 10 RTF, 11 LTR and 12 RTR. Also in this section we can apply gain to different channels. For example, if I want my subwoofer to have more level, I simply turn the level up or down. If I want some channel to be equalized in some way, then I can equalize it. For example, I'm going to accentuate at 2095 Hz and here I raise the frequency or I also attenuate in case I want only that speaker to receive that equalization and I can also set a delay to that speaker. If I want, I can reset the equalization. If I regret it, then leave it as it was. In the HDX section, I have some trims that I can use. However, I am not using HDX so 
I don't have the option to do that. And in trims, I can here adjust the gain of the channels, either one or all of them. Example, the first channel I could raise or lower the gain, or if I consider all of them, then I activate them. The same on the output. If you remember that mirror section, one uses it to adjust the control panel, but I have also used it to check whether or not signal is coming in, if I have an interface far away, or I want to see this information bigger. Another option that I really like is that when I click on matrix, all this matrix of how everything is connected comes out. Then I have all this information in case sometimes one gets confused by reviewing the routing part, because here I can understand that line out is connected to door out 1 to 32. Monitor is connected to door 1 to 32. However, this is very general. It would be better to review it in the routing section but here I can find these points that can make me understand a little better. If for some reason I make a mistake in moving something, I can click undo or I can redo some option I wanted to do. And a device that I want to recommend if you have that interface is this MRC. Here you have a monitoring control just like you have in the interface, but it's super fast. You can turn on, turn off speakers, turn up, turn down volume, whatever you want to do is in this MRC. It just connects via USB and controls everything that's in the interface. And well, this is the Galaxy 32. I really like it because it has a lot of outputs, a lot of inputs, a lot of HDX ports, Dante, MADI, a lot of inputs and outputs that are not only going to be useful for recording, but also for applying analog inserts. I've had this interface for several months now, and I like that if I want to do something additional, if I need another input, or I want to configure my routing in another way, I can just do it. I don't have to think about how I'm going to do that if I'm now going to have to sell my current interface to buy a new one. This one has it all. And if you think this video might be useful to a friend who wants a perfect interface for Dolby Atmos, wants a versatile interface with different input and output ports and everything you saw, feel free to share the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. See you in a future video. Take care of yourselves. Bye.